Hello, everyone. Welcome back to yet another forecast. My voice is, for some reason, absolutely wrecked, so I'm probably going to have to take today off and let that heal. But we do have some severe weather and tornadoes possible today, going also into tomorrow and the next day as well. We're talking about the chances for strong tornadoes, the, to the tornadoes that can actually cause a lot of damage. And in fact, we had a couple of tornadoes yesterday as well. Here's one of those tornadoes that happened yesterday near El Campo, Texas. This was taken by King Spud C. ETO here. And as you can see, we had actually decently strength tornado come through this area. Still not a whole lot of reports on what happened, at least that I have seen, but this was actually the first tornado that happened yesterday and was very close to a small but still populated region. And tornadoes like that could happen today, even going into tomorrow and the next day. So let's go ahead and start to break down what we're seeing here. We do have a couple of little areas of low pressure that are going to be making it across the country today, but our main area of energy is actually up here in this region. A little bit of a speed max in the jet stream that's going to be eventually working its way over the Colorado Rockies and that should allow for what we call Lee cyclogenesis and a, another low pressure system to form out over here tomorrow. That's going to eject into the southeast, bring some moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico and when all that mixes, we're going to be talking about some dangerous severe weather. Kind of get an understanding of what we're going to be looking at here. We're going to be looking at those 500 millibar winds and as you can see, a little bit of a strengthening area back over here near the west coast that's eventually going to push down into the colorado rockies and then watch right after it moves through this area you can see that that trough kind of strengthens here and starts to shape as it goes into the texas region and also down into louisiana arkansas mississippi alabama and tennessee and this is going to be the area where we're going to be watching out uh, for some particularly dangerous severe weather and tornado chances as we go into the 28th at around 2 p.m so stage is getting set here first in the upper levels and this is what's going to help cause spin because again the upper level winds are going to be moving like this these are the lower level winds underneath them and they're going to be moving like this if you ever have made this kind of perpendicular pattern in any body of water another thing to think about is like uh, propellers kind of do this too and the motion of the propeller in comparison to the motion of the boat is kind of perpendicular and it starts to create those swirls those whirlpools on the backside. kind of the same thing is happening here in the atmosphere with the upper and lower level winds and the lower level winds are also going to be bringing in some moisture as well so let's kind of zoom in here and check to see where our moisture lines up our instability our storm food this is what the storms will eat and yeah you know not a great sign one of the things though i am noticing here you see how we have a pretty stout area right in this region of a lot of storm food i mean this is plenty we're talking about two to three thousand joules per kilogram potentially even higher amounts but you can see how it doesn't continue all the way through here and we have a lot of these little bubbles showing up this is actually early um, morning to afternoon convection eating up some of that cape out in front of it. So our instability profile is not going to be as large as some of the models were indicating yesterday, but there's definitely going to be enough instability if we get some storms to fire back here to cause some tornadoes. And also these storms over here could also become tornadic. So let's kind of go and look at our estimated radar analysis here. And as you can see, yeah, I mean, we have storms fire back over here at around 2 p.m. Not quite mature yet. We have a lot of that what we call crap vection out in this area and if we come back and switch over to our lower level winds you can see that that main axis of lower level winds is going to be right back in this region kind of in the northern portion of louisiana going into parts of mississippi at this time if we come switch back over you can see that all of these storms over here that are firing in this region if they can mature even with this kind of morning convection then we're probably going to see that tornado risk ramp up and yeah you can see that as that lower level jet moves off to the east as we get into around 5 p.m again that's that spin with the upper level jet uh and yeah i mean but you do have storms in this area they're not as strong because it's a little bit of a skinny instability profile let's see how our instability is doing at this time of the day still a decent amount there but man really getting eaten out in front of it looks like these storms are running out of that instability a little bit earlier uh, than what was previously expected here because again you know we, we were thinking that uh, the last time we looked at the models none of this actually existed on the NAM. like barely any prefrontal crap vection existed so uh, you know it's going to be these storms back over here we're also going to have to watch for the chances of these storms over here producing tornadoes at around 6 p.m i mean this is over here east of jackson and as you can see you know it, it's kind of clustered here so there's, this is definitely going to be a failure mode. If we do get this early morning convection, it's definitely going to put a damper on the overall tornado potential than 
what would it would be like if we didn't have any of this early morning convection at all. But as I push this forward, you can definitely tell, you know, we do have some storms fire in a little bit better shear, a little bit better instability out here out in front. So let's kind of look at as we go into 10 p.m. Uh, what our uh, environment's looking like. And yeah, you can see all across eastern Mississippi going into western Alabama. We have a decent amount of that lower level shear. Upper level shear is over top of it. Instability is still hanging in there. So we could really easily get a, you know, a, a tornado or potentially a strong tornado anywhere in this area. You know, it's less instability up here. But as we saw yesterday, when we had a couple of potentially strong tornadoes happen kind of over here in central Louisiana, we didn't have a lot of storm food back then. And, you know, you don't necessarily need it when, when you have so much shear in the atmosphere. So uh, a lot of spin in the atmosphere can overcome the lack of storm food. And it's, it's, it's kind of think of it like, <laughs> I guess, the storm's ozempic. Uh, it doesn't need a whole lot of food, but it can still keep going. Um, and it doesn't feel like it needs to eat more. And that's what shear does. But as we push this throughout the day, as you can see, going into like the early morning hours, there is still some chances here. Anywhere where we have some storms, you know, there's going to be a chance for that severe weather. But I will say, you know, this prefrontal convection is going to play a significant role in one how long this tornado outbreak will last because again once it runs out of that instability it's going to be a lot less of a chance for those stronger tornadoes but still going to have a chance for maybe some more weaker and briefer tornadoes um, and as this moves into alabama also moves into the east coast we're still going to be able to see uh, the potential for some severe weather if we come back uh, over to our our storm food at the surface and just push this forward i'm wondering if the a triple r could even get in range no it can't so let's go switch over to to the NAM 3K model. This one goes out a little bit further into the future. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get this back over there. You can see that instability comes through. Not too, like the, the interesting enough, the NAM is a lot further to the east and there's just not that much prefrontal convection there. Well, and then there's also that in the back. So yeah, man, it may be significant prefrontal convection. Hold on. Yeah. It's just a messy look, actually. <laughs> you know, you can still definitely get some tornadoes and potentially strong tornadoes with the environment here, but it gets messy pretty quick on the NAM. So I think I think that's my overall takeaway with today's forecast there's still definitely potential but it could be very messy kind of like what we had yesterday just over a larger area as the storm is going to be a little bit bigger than the one we had yesterday but moving on into the 29th i do want to see if we can get that instability recovery and yeah we do as you can see at least according to the nam here at around 4 p.m we have plenty of instability storm food going all the way up into georgia and potentially enough going all the way up into parts of Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, and also up there into Ohio as well. So we could potentially see some severe weather as far north as Ohio. Looking at our shear, there's going to be plenty of it. It looks like it gets higher the further you go north. So there's going to be less instability over there, but some of that higher wind shear could overcome uh, some of that lower cape or that lower storm food environment. But we still have a decent amount where we have plenty of instability in storm food. So got to watch out for that and a decent amount of upper level winds as well so definitely a severe weather day setting up as well for the 29th and switching back over here to the future radar here you can see those storms run all the way from georgia up into ohio and we are kind of getting to the end of this model this is our only higher resolution model that is still in range and you know it's just easy here that we can just draw a line here that's where the storms will be going all the way up into ohio and then move off to the east and there will be a severe weather chance uh, really from this time at around 5 p.m. all the way throughout the hours of the night. And then as that moves off of the coast, that's when we're really going to start to see that severe weather threat died out. Now, in terms of our severe weather risks for today, we do have a marginal risk out there. I think the main thing that's catching my attention with this is the potential for some damaging winds or close to damaging winds of around 40 to 50 miles per hour. Uh, also, a small tornado risk here of about 2%. It's going to be for just to the east of New Orleans. Uh, you can see, or New Orleans, sorry, and you can see the storms are already here so a lot of the folks back over here near jackson and meridian are probably a little bit too far north for this tornado threat but areas like mobile pensacola uh near uh, just to the east of hattiesburg on the alabama and mississippi line need to be watching out for a small chance for tornadoes now going into tomorrow this is prog to be one of our most dangerous days out of these couple days but there again you know it's not going to be a guaranteed slam dunk forecast again it's going to be kind of conditional like yesterday was and a lot of things can go wrong and also a lot of things can go right and we're not 
going to know what's going to happen until the storms actually start to develop. And we see if that pre-morning convection is going to have a significant impact. But the ceiling is there or the potential is there. And that's why we have an enhanced risk out here because of that sheer environment. Even with a little bit of a mess out there, these storms could still perform. And we got to be watching out for that potential. So if you live over here near Monroe, Lake Providence, Jackson, Meridian, you're in that enhanced risk. It's a three out of five for severe weather. We've got a Two out of five for severe weather over here in Alabama, going through Mississippi, southern Arkansas, parts of Louisiana and Texas as well. And a marginal risk that extends all the way from Houston up to Nashville and Knoxville as well, even getting into parts of Atlanta and close to Tallahassee. Looking at our tornado risk, we again have a risk out here for some strong tornadoes. Again, these are the tornadoes that can cause damage to your house. Believe it or not, there's definitely tornadoes out there that sometimes just don't cause that much damage. That's what we call those weaker and briefer tornadoes. They might lift a couple shingles, throw your lawn furniture around a little bit but it's nowhere near the damage that you will see with an ef2 plus tornado those are the ones that rip off the roofs on a lot of those videos that you've probably seen about significant damage from tornadoes so we're talking about areas like monroe lake providence uh also over here near new roads macomb jackson hattiesburg laurel meridian philadelphia in mississippi greenwood granada starkville demopolis and Etowah there in Alabama all need to be weather aware for a strong tornado risk. Again, conditional, but still could definitely happen. Uh, Shreveport, Baton Rouge, Mobile, areas like Montgomery, Birmingham, even south are uh, getting close to Huntsville over there near Decatur, Alabama could see a 5% tornado risk, which means, you know, still got to watch out for a small potential for strong tornadoes. But the most likely scenario is that if you do get a tornado, it'll be an EF0 or EF1, but still definitely worth watching out for that potential and around that is a two percent tornado risk so this is a two percent chance of seeing a tornado within a five mile radius or 25 mile radius of your city it's gonna be for areas like houston little rock Pine Bluff, Nashville, uh, Huntsville, going down into Dothan, Panama City, and just to the south of New Orleans, also Nashville. Atlanta is also partially in that. Tornado risk isn't our only risk for tomorrow. As you can see, we have a wind risk of 30% here in this kind of bullseye region where we could see some stronger tornadoes and also some damaging winds, more widespread damaging winds of 60 miles per hour and above. That's gonna be from Monroe, Jackson, and Meridian. 15% around that in the yellow and a 5% around that in the brown. And then hail is also Potentially could be a little bit of an issue with a 15% chance over there near Shreveport and Jackson and then a 5% around that extending all the way up into Nashville and down into Florida. And coming over to day three, as you can see, we already have a severe weather risk for this day as well. And it extends really all the way from northern Florida, all the way up into Ohio and parts of Pennsylvania. You know, that instability, not going to be super great up here, but with that shear, you can still definitely get some instances of severe weather uh, and potentially even tornadoes. We'll have to see just how far north that tornado risk goes and as we get in close. But, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of surprise tornadoes, maybe a little bit further north where we have a lot of shear and some of that low instability. The main area where we're going to be watching out for severe weather uh, going into the 29th is going to be Augusta, Columbia, Charlotte, Fayetteville, Greensboro, Roanoke and parts of Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina and Georgia and then a marginal risk in the green. So still a little iffy on the details. None of our high resolution models are in range. So some things are definitely going to change as we get closer. But overall, these are the folks that need to be paying attention attention to the next forecast as we move forward. In terms of snow across the United States, as you can tell, it's still pretty warm out there. Still not very conducive for any snow really anywhere. Except for up here, we might get a little bit of a brief snowfall up here in Wisconsin. So let's kind of look at that. So yeah, it looks like uh, once the storm kind of ejects off to the north on the 28th, while there's severe weather trying to get locked and loaded down there in the south, we could see a, a brief transition here in northern Wisconsin and also going up into Minnesota, but I will say, given the fact that this is completely shrouded by rain, there's probably a chance that this doesn't even happen at all. But if it happens just like this, then you could potentially see some snow. I would say it might be a little bit less than this. In fact, I'm curious to see what the national forecasters are saying in this area. Yeah, they don't even have anything there, so they're not overly confident. I'm not overly confident either, but hey, there is a scenario where you guys could get some extra snow up there, so just keep that in mind, maybe a couple of inches. We've got a lot of reports of power outages out here in the Pacific Northwest, and you know we're still continuing to see the wind and rain pile up. 
First storm prog to come in sometime at around 4 p.m. on the 27th. That's going to push through. And then eventually we're going to have another piece of energy come through on the 29th as well at around 6 a.m., bringing more snow, rain, and wind. We're going to be going over those amounts here in just a second. And then after that, uh, it should kind of clear out as we go into the 30th, but another little area could eventually make its way into the Pacific Northwest as we go later into the future. In terms of snowfall across the United States, a lot of it is going to be happening uh, in the Sierra Mountains going up into the Cascades still a decent amount to come maybe a couple of feet down here maybe three to four feet up still possible in the uh, p the northern pacific northwest and you see a lot of snow in the mountains here in eastern oregon going into northern idaho also over there to the east of boise idaho as well in the southern portions of the mountains going down into the utah mountains could see a couple feet of snow there as well and same back over here in the colorado rockies so a decent amount of snow is still coming maybe a little bit lower elevation snow possible with a quick little uh, clipper system that could eventually uh, kind of move through this area. It's going to be some light snow, maybe one to two inches is going to be possible there. So we got a lot of rain coming, which means a lot of precipitation and a lot of rainfall as well. And in fact, we could be getting a decent amount of rainfall. One of the things that that prefrontal convection is going to increase is the rainfall amounts out here, especially around in the southeast. So you can see we could have some decent flooding uh, all the way from Texas going all the way up into parts of northern Virginia. I mean, we're talking about uh, widespread three to four inches with some isolated spots here uh, getting pretty close to a foot of rain this down here is about seven to eight inches of rain here in mississippi uh, and then eventually it kind of tapers off but we can still get a couple of small instances of those six to seven inch rain amounts maybe five to six inches over here near washington also a lot of rainfall still to come uh, over here in the pacific northwest most of this here is snow but on the coast here we could be talking about still the potential for up to 15 inches of rain in northern california with lower amounts north and south, but still enough to cause some issues. Now, in terms of the temperatures across the United States, you can see that that warm up is going to continue to push up to the north. That's why we're not going to really see any snow on the 28th, maybe due to this little bit of cooler air hanging on in northern Wisconsin that might transition in the snow up there, but still low confidence about that. And also pushing into the 30th here, you can see those temperatures are still hanging on pretty warm. I mean, even up here in the northeast, this is anomalously warm uh, for December, about to move into January. But then eventually, as we go into the future, some cooler air is uh, forecasted to kind of come uh, back into the United States. Now, just how cold this is going to be is still a big question mark. But man, <laughs> a little bit of deja vu of, of December. Are we about to set up in the same pattern where most of the people that get snow is going to be up here again? Or maybe we'll get some more moisture to come down into the south. Still some huge question marks going into January. Not worth speculating because I'm not going to be able to tell you guys any actual information. Just I'm just going to be able to get your hopes up for no reason. So. As you can see, it's going to be warmer for a couple of days, and that cooler air is going to eventually try to come in on January. We just don't know how cold it's going to be, and nobody knows. Nobody knows how much snow or where the snowstorms are going to be uh, in January. And if they tell you that they do know what's going to happen, that's a sign that they're very inexperienced and just don't know what they're talking about. So you ever see somebody say, I know how much snow is going to happen on J January. I'd probably stop listening to them because they're basically a snake oil salesman. But anyways, folks, hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. We'll be live tomorrow to cover it. Uh, the severe weather, potential outbreak it's possible in the southeast. And I'll be monitoring the storms today. Day, but I think I have to let my voice rest because as you can tell, it's a little bit raspy. See you then. Peace.